complex regional pain syndrome um, can follow any injury. And there is even record in the literature that it can occur spontaneously. But it's very rare that it would do that. But I have seen it and more than once. But then I have practiced for many years. It, I would, it's certainly not something I would see every year. The, the, the sources for complex regional pain syndrome was something that I was able to publish in that I went and did a meta-analysis. Well, didn't do the meta-analysis, but did a systematic literature review. There wasn't enough data for a meta-analysis, which is unfortunate and is often the case for any research with complex regional pain syndrome because it's not something that's very common. But the factors that were shown to be something where your risk was increased for complex regional pain syndrome to develop potentially is, A, if you are a female in your postmenopausal phase, Number two, if you have a fracture of the distal radius, that's the arm bone at the wrist, and if you have a, a complex fracture of the ankle. So if you're a, it's the most wonderful thing. In the UK, they saw in their one depart, one hospital orthopedic department that their, their percentage of people developing complex regional pain syndrome following the distal radius wrist fractures was quite high. So they decided, right, they're going to do something about this. So looking at those risk factors, being female, being especially postmenopausal and having a distal radio fracture, they made an algorithm of eight steps and they reduced their incidence of complex regional pain syndrome from 25% to 